Hello everyone, how are you all? This is your ma'am Akshita and I'd like to welcome you all to the session today. So in the previous session, we learned about hydrocarbons and to be very precise, specifically we learned about alkanes. And that was the part one of hydrocarbons, that is the lecture one. Today is the lecture 2 where we will be covering part 2 which is alkanes and alkynes along with their methods of preparation, physical properties and chemical properties. So without further ado, let's get into the session. So what are we going to do today? Today we are going to, today we are going to talk about, today we are going to talk about alkanes, alright, sorry, alkenes. Today we are going to talk about alkenes and alkynes. Okay, under alkenes and alkynes, we will be learning about their methods of preparation. Okay, their methods of preparation. Once we are done with the methods of preparation, we will then, we will then talk about their physical properties. We will then talk about their physical properties and finally their chemical properties. Now, why is it that I have combined the... Why is it that I have combined alkenes and alkynes together? The reason is, lot of their chemical properties are quite similar. Alright, a little similar with respect to how these, uh, you know, uh, reactions take place. Because they both undergo the same type of chemical reaction, which is electrophilic addition reaction. So, when we get there, we learn about it. But let's start off with alkenes. So, alkenes have the general formula CnH2n. Their general formula is CnH2n and the pi bond contains loosely bonded electrons. Okay, and it is because of this. It is because of these electrons. They attract the electrophile. They attract the electrophile. Now, you guys are well aware of electrophiles. Electrophiles are nothing but electron loving groups. That is, those groups which are electron deficient, that is the reason why they are electron loving groups, right? So, they are electrophiles and thus the characteristic reaction of alkene are electrophilic addition reaction which stands true for alkynes as well because even they have pi bond and not one but two pi bonds, alright? What kind of isomerism do they show? They show both structural as well as stereo isomerism, under structural isomerism, they show chain isomerism, positional isomerism and functional isomerism. Butene exists in all these three isomeric forms, but 1-ene, but 2-ene, 2-methyl prop 1-ene. Alright, now what about geometrical isomerisms? They do exhibit geometrical isomerism, that is they do show cis and trans isomerism. They, they do exist in cis and trans form. Cis means when the like groups, two like groups are on the same side of the plane and trans is when they are on opposite sides of the plane. Okay, so cis isomer is one, trans isomer is one. You can also remember it in this way. Same, sir, the sound is same, thereby cis. Okay, all right, so this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like and this cis and trans isomers, they have different melting points, boiling points, dipole moment, symmetry and solubility and so on and so forth. Let's try to understand, let's try to understand what is the difference between cis and trans isomer. When you look at the melting point, okay, beta, melting point. Now, let me tell you melting point, melting point is directly proportional to symmetry. It is directly proportional to symmetry. That is, if the symmetry is more, if the symmetry is more, the melting point will automatically increase. More is the symmetry, more will be the melting point. Now, between cis and trans isomer, as you can see, it is the trans isomer which is more symmetrical, right? Which is more symmetrical. Thereby, thereby, the melting point of trans isomer is more because of their symmetry. Now, when we talk about boiling point, when we talk about boiling point, you can say that boiling point, boiling point is directly proportional to dipole moment. It is directly proportional to dry dipole moment. Okay. It is directly proportional to dipole moment. And when you see this, when you see this, between the cis and the trans, you can see that the dipole moment is going to be more for the cis isomer and not for the trans. That is the reason why the boiling point of cis isomer is going to be greater than the trans isomer. Cis form of 
एल्किन इज मोर पोलार देन द ट्रांस एल्किन ऑफकोर्स द डायपोल मोमेंट एक्सिस्ट पोलैरिटी इज देयर दैट इज वेन डायपोल मोमेंट कम्स इन टू पिक्चर एंड बिटवीन सिस एंड ट्रांस ऑब्वियसली सिस हैपन्स टू हैव ग्रेटर पोलैरिटी इन सॉलिड्स इट हैज बीन ऑब्जर्व दैट trans isomer has higher melting point than cis isomer because of their symmetry they can be arranged one below the other they can be layered one below the other stacked one below the other and trans isomer is more stable than cis isomer this is something that is supposed to know between cis and trans isomer trans isomer is more stable because the reason is it does not have or has less dipole moment in comparison to cis more is the dipole moment more is the polarity more is the dipole moment more will be the reactivity and only those molecules are reactive which are less stable always keep that in mind so this is about the difference between the cis and the trans isomer now how do we prepare how do we prepare them so we can prepare them see the thing is why is it why is it that alkenes alkenes and alkynes alkenes and alkynes are both they are both said to be what they are both said to be unsaturated compounds they are both said to be unsaturated compounds why why are they called unsaturated compounds it is because the number of hydrogens per carbon the number of hydrogens for a given number of carbon atoms is less in comparison of to that of alkanes that is why alkanes is called saturated hydrocarbon because it is saturated with respect to hydrogen whereas alkanes and alkynes are unsaturated with respect to alkanes okay now if i want to prepare if i want to prepare if i want to prepare alkene now the saturation of alkene the, that is the number of hydrogen atoms for alkene is intermediate to that of it is intermediate to that of alkanes and alkynes so if you hydrogenate alkynes you will get alkenes if you dehydrogenate alkanes you will get alkenes so that is exactly what you will see that when you hydro uh, sorry hydrogenate alkynes you will get in the presence of poisoned palladium this is also known as lindlard's catalyst you will get you will get cis alkene now how do you poison it either with uh, quinoline sulfur okay and you will get cis alkene and and the other way is with sodium in liquid ammonia when you hydrogenate it you will get the trans alkene now trans alkene is formed when sodium in liquid ammonia is used palladium okay palladium poisoned palladium poison can be quinoline or sulfur these are the poisons why are we using poisons so that so that the reaction stops at alkenes only and further hydrogenation does not take place okay this is known as this is known as lindlar's catalyst lindlar's catalyst and lindlar's catalyst gives you cis alkene whereas whereas sodium in liquid ammonia sodium na in liquid ammonia sodium in liquid ammonia this is nothing but your birch birch reagent and this birch reagent this sorry and this birch reagent gives you this birch reagent gives you trans alkene okay now moving on moving on by dehydrohalogenation of alkyl halides i have already told you the carbon directly attached to a functional group is alpha carbon and the one adjacent to it is beta carbon now in the presence of alcoholic koh always remember alcoholic koh when alcoholic koh comes into picture elimination reaction okay beta elimination to be precise takes place now why beta because the hydrogen from beta hydrogen from beta carbon beta carbon is is eliminated is eliminated all right so that is exactly what happens over here beta elimination takes place and you will get your alkene and you will get your alkene and this is how you prepare this is how you prepare prepare <coughs> alkenes from alkyl halides moving on moving on the order of ease of halogenation dehydrohalogenation of tertiary is more than secondary is more than primary tertiary carbon tertiary carbon is more reactive towards beta hydrogenation beta uh, beta elimination beta dehydrohalogenation in comparison to that of secondary and primary uh, you will learn its mechanism in your second year under the chapter haloalkanes and haloarenes but let me give you the reason carbocation is formed beta 
carbocation is formed as an intermediate and you already are aware that tertiary carbocation is more stable than secondary carbocation is more stable than primary carbocation by the virtue of hyperconjugation by the works by the virtue of hyperconjugation that is why tertiary is more stable than secondary is more stable than primary okay and the reactivity order is that is iodides alkyl iodides are more reactive than bromides are more reactive than chlorides okay and more stable alkene is formed as major product how do you know which is the more stable alkene by sezef rule sezef Sezef rule, Sezef rule. What does Sezef rule say? What does Sezef rule say? In some books, it is also known as Zesef rule. Uh, they are the same. Okay, the pronunciation is different. The spelling is different, but they are the same. It basically says, Sezef rule basically says that more substituted, more substituted, more substituted alkene is more stable or is 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 or i would rather say forms forms major product okay more substituted alkene forms major product now moving on by dehalogenation of vicinal dihalides in the presence of zinc beta in the presence of zinc okay zinc in the presence of h plus what is going to happen is ZnBr2 will be formed, okay? By acid catalyzed dehydration of alcohols. Let me tell you, concentrated H2SO4, concentrated H2SO4, concentrated H2SO4 is a strong dehydrating agent. It is a strong dehydrating. It is a very strong dehydrating agent. It is a very strong dehydrating agent. And, and it is in the presence of, it is in the presence of concentrated, concentrated, concentrated concentrated alcohol over here concentrated h2so4 that beta elimination again takes place and you will get your alkene again your tertiary is more than secondary is more than primary wherever beta elimination is taking place that is the hydrogen from beta carbon is being removed understand carbocation is formed and when carbocation is there tertiary is more stable than secondary is more stable than primary more stable alkene is formed as the major product again apply the sezef rule over here Okay, so this is how it is prepared by Kolbe's electrolysis. Now, you learned something similar to this in, in alkanes. Now, what is happening is here, here, I'll again rearrange it. Okay, you are going to treat alcohol, uh, sorry, you are going to treat carboxylic acid, carboxylic acid with soda amide. Oh, sorry, soda lime, not soda amide, soda lime, soda lime, soda lime. Okay, now you can take KOH in the presence of CaO or you can also take NaOH in the presence of CaO. Here KOH is taken because K plus is added. Now to carboxylic acid when you add this, you will get, you will get sodium, sodium, sodium carboxylate. Okay, that is the sodi uh, sodium or potassium salts of carboxylic acid. Now when you are treating this with, when you are treating this with, water, you will get you will get th2 double bond th2 plus 2 moles of carbon dioxide plus 2 moles of koh plus h2 where these two are formed at the anode and these two are formed at the cathode. I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. You have already come across this in alkanes. Okay, a similar kind of reaction you will see in alkynes as well. So, this is by Kolbe's electrolysis. Now, what are the physical properties? First three alkenes are gases. First three alkenes are gases. Next 14 alkenes are liquids. And the higher alkenes are solids. And the higher alkenes are Solids. Melting point and boiling point increases. Melting point and boiling point increases with increase in molecular weight. If the molecular weight is increasing, melting point and boiling point will increase. And as you are going higher up in the series, obviously the melting point and boiling point will increase because, because of, because of the increase in their molecular weight. Alright, now let's talk about the chemical properties.
properties. Now, we are already aware that alkenes undergo, alkenes undergo electrophilic addition reaction. They undergo electrophilic addition reaction. So, when hydrogenation takes place, okay, hydrogenation takes place, hydrogen is added. Okay, when hydrogenation takes place, hydrogen is added and in turn you get your alkanes. Now, notice one thing, the chemical property of one is the method of preparation of the other. So, this particular chemical property, this particular chemical property of alkenes, is it not the method of preparation of alkanes, which you did learn about when you were learning alkanes? This is one thing that you need to keep in mind. Addition of halogens, bromine in the presence of CCl4 gives rise to 1, 2 dibromoethane. Now, let me tell you, this is known as bromine in the presence presence of CCl4, bromine in the presence of CCl4 is known as bromine water. This is known as bromine water. What is this known as, beta? This is known as bromine water. And this bromine water is brown in color. This bromine water is brown in color. This bromine water is brown in color. What happens is when alkene reacts with bromine water, it becomes colorless. Okay, in the above reaction, reddish brown orange color of bromine in CCl4 is discharged. That means this becomes, this becomes, this becomes colorless. That is the bromine water becomes colorless because all the bromine now reacts with the alkene and it becomes colorless. This is also known as this one, this one, this particular test is also known as this particular test. This is also known as test for test for unsaturation. This is also known as test for unsaturation. This is also known as test for unsaturation. Please have a look everyone. Please have a look everyone. This is what it is. Now moving on to the next reaction which is addition of hydrogen halide that is HX. This is what you need to keep in mind, HX. Now, for symmetrical, for symmetrical alkenes, for symmetrical alkenes, the, the delocalization of this pi bond, it can move like this or it can move like this. Both are possible, either this way or that way. Why? It is symmetrical, does not make a difference. It does not make a difference. You will end up getting, you will end up getting alkyl halide. You will end up getting alkyl halide. However, for unsymmetrical alkenes, it is very important that Markovnikov's rule is formed, followed. Markovnikov's rule is followed, which states that the negative part of the addendum, that is the molecule which is going to be added in the case of H plus and X minus, the negative part of the addendum, that is the X minus. <clears throat> Attack the carbon atom that contains less number of hydrogen atoms or the electrophile attacks. Electrophile is nothing but the positive part of the addendum. This electrophile is nothing but the positive part, positive part of the addendum, positive part of the addendum which is nothing but your H plus. This attacks the carbon, okay, of the double bond in such a way that more stable carbocation is formed as intermediate. In simpler terms, if I have to say, I can say rich becomes richer, poor becomes poorer. Rich becomes richer, poor becomes poorer. Rich becomes richer, poor becomes poorer. And this is with respect to, this is with respect to, with respect to number of hydrogen atoms. Number of hydrogen atoms. Number of hydrogen atoms. Now, when you look over here, when you look over here, this hydrogen, this hydrogen, it is having, this hydrogen is having more, no, sorry, this carbon is having more number of hydrogens. Let's name this carbon 1 and this is carbon 2. This is having le less number of hydrogens. Now, the delocalization takes place in this way that this carbon ends up getting a negative charge and this carbon gets a positive charge. Now, we are aware that tertiary carbocation is more stable than secondary carbocation is more stable than primary carbocation. Now, since this is the <clears throat> Uh, positive carbocation. Okay, to this the to this the negative addendum will attach, and to this the hydrogen will attach. As a result, you will get two bromopropane as the major product and one bromopropane as the minor product. Clear? Please have a look. Please have a look, everyone. Please have a look. This is about the Markovnikov's rule. This is about the Markovnikov's rule. Then. 
when there's a possibility of formation of more stable carbocation then one two hydride shift or methyl shift takes place see what happens is sometimes there's a possibility of formation of carbocation in that case hydride or methyl shift takes place so that the more stable carbocation is formed at the end of the day we want stable products only stable uh, intermediates can give rise to stable products keep that in mind right now anti markovnikov's addition or kharash effect or peroxide effect now what happens is beta in when hbr that is hydrogen bromide is taken in the presence of a peroxide then markovnikov's rule is not followed it's not followed they undergo free radical they undergo free radical mechanism and yes tertiary free radical is more than secondary free radical but when you see when you see you will get that the minor product the minor product of the of the may uh, markovnikov's rule becomes a major product over here and the major product of the markovnikov's rule becomes a minor product over here please have a look please have a look at the screen please have a look at the screen i hope this is making sense all right then now addition of sulfuric acid sulfuric acid again can be written as h plus okay o s o 3 h minus and this minus charge is on oxygen by the way okay let me write it properly so that you know you guys don't get confused and even this follows markovnikov's rule markovnikov's rule is followed over here as well markovnikov's rule is followed over here as well addition of water addition of water also follows addition of water also follows markovnikov's rule addition of water also follows markovnikov's rule okay and that is why that is why this gets a negative charge this gets a positive charge as a result oh is attached here h is attached here you will get this clear <clears throat> oxymercuration demercuration this also this is in simpler terms if i have to say addition of water only addition of water okay and this follows this follows and this follows markovnikov's rule clear hydroboration oxidation now the thing is in hydroboration oxidation okay markovnikov's rule is followed but anti markovnikov product is obtained and this also in simpler terms is nothing but addition of water basically this b2h6 okay b2h6 is nothing but diborane is nothing but 2bh3 right now this 2bh3 acts as bh3 plus h and then finally oh is added by removing bh3 addition of hypochlorous acid this is nothing but even this follows markovnikov's rule it is nothing but oh minus cl oxidation by bayer's reagent oxidation by bayer's reagent bayer's reagent is nothing but cold dilute kmno4 cold dilute kmno4 and this gives us diol that is you will get ch2 ch2 oh oh as the product as the product and this is also known as test for unsaturation okay why because the kmno4 is pink in color it is pink in color in the above reaction in the above reaction the pink color is lost okay after this particular diol is formed all right all right then oxidation by acidic potassium dichromate acidic potassium dichromate but you can learn this by a trick i would like to share it with you see ch3 c 
सी सी एच थ्री ओके डबल बॉन्ड सी एच एच नाउ इन दिस पर्टिक्यूलर केस वॉट इज सपोज टू डू इज प्लीज है लुक यू ब्रेक द डबल बॉन्ड एंड टू द कार्बन यू एड ऑक्सीजन टू बोथ द कार्बन यू एड ऑक्सीजन बाई ब्रेकिंग द डबल बॉन्ड एंड बिटवीन कार्बन एंड हाइड्रोजन यू प्लेस अ ऑक्सीजन एज अ रिजल्ट वॉट यू विल गेट एज सी एच थ्री सी डबल बॉन्ड ओ सी एच थ्री प्लस एच एच टू सी ओ थ्री विच इज अगेन नथिंग बट एच टू ओ प्लस सीओ इज दैट वॉट नॉट यू हैव गॉट इन एज द प्रोडक्ट दिस इज द ट्रिक यू कैन फॉलो यू दिस इज द ट्रिक यू कैन फॉलो फॉर एसिडिक पोटेशियम डाइक्रोमेट ऑल राइट किड्स नाउ एल्काइलिक सब्सटीट्यूशन एल्काइलिक सब्सटीट्यूशन रिएक्शन एल्काइलिक सब्सटीट्यूशन रिएक्शन यू विल गेट दिस क्लोरिन और ब्रोमीन इज अटैच क्लोरिन और ब्रोमीन इज अटैच Now talking about ozonolysis, talking about ozonolysis, talking about ozonolysis. What is supposed to do is wherever there is a, wherever there is a double bond, you will draw the ozonoid. That is C O C H three O O by breaking their double bond, you will get C H three and C H three. As a result, you will get CH three CO CH three and HCHO. This is CH two, by the way. HCHO. Please have a look. This particular thing is nothing but ozonoid. That is when you add the ozone to the carbon having the double bonds. This particular thing is known as the ozonoid. Now let's talk about alkynes. Now let's talk about the alkynes. The general formula of alkyne is CnH2n minus two. That is maximum unsaturation is over here. For given number of carbons, the least number of hydrogen is present in the case of alkynes, and they have a triple bond. They have a triple bond. Their hybridization is sp, and the angle between them is one eighty degrees. And their their geometry is linear. Their geometry is linear. They have two pi bonds and one sigma bond. Okay, number of linear atoms in alkynes is equal to number of sp orbitals. okay now hydrolysis how do you actually prepare alkynes so from from calcium carbide calcium carbide reacts with water molecule to give rise to acetylene to give rise to acetylene plus calcium hydroxide to give rise to acetylene plus calcium hydroxide similarly magnesium carbide reacts with water to give rise to to give rise to to give rise to alkyne to give rise to alkyne that is propyne propyne along with the formation of magnesium hydroxide then another way of preparation is from vicinal dihalides you can remove the bromine you can remove the remove the bromine okay basically what happens is beta elimination takes place beta beta elimination takes place so if i write the molecule it is something like this c h h b r c b r h h so for this carbon this carbon this is the beta carbon by one mole of koh you will get alkene now further hydrogen and bromine is removed in the presence of any nh2 you will get you will get acetylene you will get acetylene you will get acetylene you will get acetylene so basically the structure for this is then going to be h c br double bond c h h now again this is removed and you will get acetylene dehalogenation dehalogenation from tetrahaloalkenes in the presence of zinc dust why dust because more surface area why dust because more surface area the bromine is removed and you will get acetylene again now coal base electrolysis beta coal base electrolysis coal base electrolysis how do you get coal base electrolysis so basically if there is let's say h c double bond ch okay this h can be or any you know any other alkyl group also now this has o o <clears throat> k wait i made a mistake let me write it properly
okay in the presence of water you will get c triple bond ch plus two molecules of carbon dioxide plus koh plus h2 where these two are formed at the anode and these two are formed at the cathode this is the reaction this is the reaction this is the reaction for coal base electrolysis now physical properties melting points and boiling points of alkynes are higher than those of corresponding alkenes and alkenes because alkynes have a linear structure they have a greater surface area okay due to which the molecules are more closely packed due to which the molecules are more closely packed and alkynes are less reactive than alkenes towards electrophilic addition reaction they are less reactive alkynes are less reactive than alkenes towards electrophilic addition reaction because the electrons and alkynes are more chemical properties are tightly held than alkenes okay they are more tightly held than alkene this chemical property should be eliminated now acidic nature of alkyne beta the acidic nature of alkyne you see it lies intermediate over here now this hydrogen that is there it is capable of losing it it is capable of losing it okay and understand one thing more is the percentage of s character more is the percentage of s character more is going to be the acidic acidic character or nature so between 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 when you look at alkene okay alkene between alkyne alkene and alkene you look at the s character it is maximum for alkyne sp hybridized for alkene sp2 for alkene sp3 clear that is why now reaction with sodium in liquid ammonia when it reacts with sodium in liquid ammonia this hydrogen since it is acidic it is replaced okay and you will get you will get this you will get this now this is further capable of undergoing this is further capable of undergoing undergoing uh, you know uh, this can further react with uh, alkyl halide and this can give rise to higher higher alkynes it can give rise to higher alkynes okay this reaction is utilized for the preparation of higher alkynes i told you right now to this if i add alkyl halide okay i will get a higher alkyne reaction with ammonical cuprous chloride ammonical cuprous chloride it reduces ammonical cuprous chloride it reduces ammonical cuprous chloride okay and the and you will see that cu plus is reduced to cu plus is reduced to cu it reduces ammonical cuprous chloride now it undergoes addition reaction it undergoes addition reaction uh, uh, bromine water test takes place test for unsaturation it does take place and it loses its it loses its color okay and it is capable of undergoing both electrophilic and nucleophilic addition reaction it is capable of undergoing both electrophilic and nucleophilic addition reaction addition of ozone this is also known as ozonolysis again over here beta again over here what happens is one thing you need to understand alkynes upon ozonolysis will give rise to will give rise to the respective carboxylic acids addition of hydrogen halides addition of hydrogen halides addition of hydrogen halides addition of hydrogen halides this is what you will get follows markovnikov's rule please have a look addition of water is nothing but a nucleophilic addition reaction is a nucleophilic addition reaction it takes place in the place of hgso4 and h2so4 okay and you will get you will get enol in and all this undergoes further tautomerization to give rise to the ketone ketone please have a look please please have a look 
एडिशन ऑफ हाइड्रोजन सेम थिंग बेटा इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ निकल पलेडियम ओके प्लैटिनम इट अंडर गोज टू गिव राइज टू एल्किन एंड एल्किन फर्दर गिव राइज टू एल्केन पॉलीमराइजेशन ऑल्सो टेक्स प्लेस पॉलीमराइजेशन ऑल्सो टेक्स प्लेस इन द प्रेजेंस ऑफ कॉपर क्लोराइड एंड अमोनियम क्लोराइड यूल गेट विनाइल एसिटाइलिन एंड फाइनली वेन यू टॉक अबाउट साइक्लिक पॉलीमराइजेशन इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एस ट्राइमराइजेशन यू विल गेट बेनजीन वेन एसिटाइलिन थ्री मोल्स ऑफ एसिटाइलिन इज ट्रीटेड विथ रेड हॉट कॉपर ट्यूब और आयन ट्यूब यू विल गेट योर बेनजीन दिस इज द मेथड ऑफ प्रेपरेशन ऑफ बेनजीन Now the alcoholic QH shifts terminal C triple bond to internal C triple bond, and NaNH two shifts internal C triple bond to terminal C triple bond. You can see this. This is more or less like a note. It's not there in your NCERTs, but like a note. All right then, kids. With this, we have come to the end of the session where we have understood about alkenes and alkynes in totality. In the next session, that is part three, we shall be learning about benzene. So, without further ado, stay tuned. And if you have any doubts, please reach out to us in the comment section. Until then, keep smiling, keep revising, and stay healthy. Bye bye. Cut. <laughs> Ta ta ta.